are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. Hey, everybody, this is TJ. And this is Super Fan. And we're just hanging out with the little guy. And we just finished seeing the movie Oppenheimer. Yes, we did. And um, I'll go ahead and take the opening shot, if you don't mind. Go ahead. After seeing this movie, I feel, in fact, not I don't feel, I know I want to see it again. Okay. Um, after seeing this movie, it was really good, and I'm glad I saw it, mm -hmm. but I don't think I want to see it again. I'm going to want to ask you why, but for, well, no, go ahead. Why, why do you feel like you don't know if you want to see it again? Um, it was very good, but it's just a period of history that it, it was kind of an intense time. And I hear where you're coming from. It is an intense film. Very. Uh, you, granted it is. But I knew it would be because this is Christopher Nolan after all. Yeah. I walked out of that theater feeling like I wanted to see it again for a lot of reasons. One, there's a lot of nuance in this film in regards to history. Yeah. And in regards to dialogue, some of which I'm not 100% sure I was getting because the theater we were in was oppressively loud. Yeah. And the soundtrack was oppressively loud. And sometimes it was hard to make out certain parts of dialogue for that reason. There are nuances of history that I think were flying over my head that I think I'd like to understand better. And as a byproduct of what I just said, I feel a need and a desire to actually learn more about Robert Oppenheimer about this period in history, just read more about it, learn more about it. I feel a real strong desire. So I think that's probably one of the best things that a historical movie can do. Is, is yeah, make you want to learn. Make you want to learn more and compel you to learn more. And I really do feel that. Another reason I want to go see it again is because the theater we were in was also just oppressively cold. And... It was an icebox. Yeah. It was about 50 degrees in that theater. Yeah, as it is in other parts of the United States right now and other parts of the world where a lot of people are going through really, you know, horrible heat, uh, you know, uh, heat waves. I felt no need to bring, you know, a jacket or a hoodie with me. And yeah, it was freezing. And I signed, I finally made the choice about maybe, maybe about 30 minutes into the movie or so. Yeah. To quickly walk outside, go to the car. I got us both hoodies to wear because we keep them in, in the car so that they're there in case we need them. And that way we could more concentrate on the film. Um, so I want to see what I missed. That's another reason. But more so just because I just feel this compulsion to know more, to understand better. And because I feel like I missed out on a certain amount of nuance and dialogue. There were moments in this film that were very unsettling. Yeah. And surreal. Which you don't see too much in historical films that are about, you know, real history. I don't. I don't think I have. Um, and I'm not talking about unsettling because, okay, maybe you're doing a film about war and the war scenes are brutal. No, you know, it's, there, it was more the music, I think, that created... The music did, but there were also visuals that dipped into the surreal, the dreamlike. And there was that one scene in the, quote-unquote, what we refer to as the kangaroo court scene, that it became very surreal. Yeah. And you know what scene I'm talking about. By the way... We're not going out of our way to give spoilers, but we're also not avoiding them. And if they pop out, they pop out. But as much as I can, I'm going to try not to give spoilers in case you haven't seen it. 
But yeah, you know what I'm talking about. There was like that scene, that, but there were other scenes that were just surreal. And as I was watching this film, I, it made me acutely aware of why that bizarre Marilyn Monroe film that was on Netflix called Blonde, why that film didn't work. And it was because that film used moments of surrealism, artsy moments of surrealism constantly, mm -hmm. whereas this film used them very sparingly. Yeah, so it was, when it was it used very them, subtle. They had impact. Yeah. They profoundly impacted you. And uh, I have ha ever since I saw that film, I've been kind of just trying to understand what exactly was wrong with it because it wasn't like there wasn't talent on the screen. And I'm talking about the movie Blonde, the uh, Netflix film Blonde. It wasn't like there wasn't talent on the screen. There was plenty of talent on the screen, both in front of and behind the camera. But it, I think it was just the overuse of... Yeah, it was a little heavy-handed with those moments. Yeah, very heavy-handed. Whereas this film used them sparingly so that when it happened, it made, it made a real impact. Yeah. I especially like the way that... Christopher Nolan made use of silence in the film because the soundtrack was very intense. And when we're talking soundtrack, we should also mention there's the music that is the soundtrack, but there's also sound design. Yeah, but the music was brilliant in that it created tension. Yeah, it was like... And it kept going and it kept going and it's like, stop already! Yeah, it would make you feel like you were watching some kind of intense psychological thriller. And there is a lot of psychology involved yeah. in this film. Well, in that way, it is a psychological thriller in a lot of ways. In some ways, yes, but not in the way we're used to thinking of it. No. Very mundane things can be happening in this film, but the music feels like you're in the middle of an intense psychological horror thriller. Yeah. And to a certain extent, this film wants you to understand that while there were noble intentions behind what Robert Oppenheimer and his team were trying to do at this time, they were also creating a horror that is still with us now. Well, it will be with us forever. Yeah, unless we, I don't know. No, we, you can't. Yeah, I know. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. No. You know. Not this one. Unless we all suddenly take a magic pill and agree to universal peace. And brotherhood it's always going to be there i guess uh but yeah i want to see this film again obviously i really liked it uh i think i'm going to be thinking about it oh for sure for days and weeks to come and i think i'm going to be spending time on the internet reading articles and stories about this period in history looking up youtube videos that might give me more background and I, I think I'll be spending a lot of time in the coming weeks doing that. And probably at some point when the film comes to streaming, I will watch it again. But yeah, a uh, strong film. I would recommend it. Definitely. Yeah. I do have to say something. One of my favorite things about this film was Robert Downey Jr. Oh, I think we'll see an Academy Award nomination there. Yeah. I mean... It was, it, it was, as I was watching the film, when his character first came on screen, and I'm watching him there for like, I don't know, I don't know, it wasn't too long, but there was a moment when I realized, wait a minute, that's Iron Man. <laughs> that's Robert Downey Jr. And damn, he was really great. He was. He was. <sighs> and just... There's one scene in particular mm -hmm. where yes. his character has a line. Yeah. And he says, so and so is not going to support Oppenheimer. Yeah. Because he did this to him. And that moment summed up his entire character in one line. Yeah. I mean, that was the writing for that moment, though. When he was on camera, and he wasn't on camera, it wasn't like. It was like a supporting... Cillian Murphy, who was on camera for a good portion of the film Killian. because he's Killian Murphy. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have trouble sometimes with that. Killian Murphy. It wasn't like him where he's carrying the movie. He's on camera all the time. Robert Downey Jr.'s character 
he's there and then he's gone for a while and then he comes back and he's gone for a while. But his presence is there throughout. Once you're done with the film, you realize his presence was there the whole time. And But when Robert Downey Jr. is on camera, he's just stealing the show. He really is, in my opinion. And Yeah, he did. And that's not an insult to anybody no, else. No, it's not an insult to anybody else. Everybody's great in this film. Matt Damon. I forgot it was Matt Damon at times. He was just so good at playing this you know, military veteran. He was just so good that I forgot he was Matt Damon. Um, I think a lot of the, a lot of the cast. I mean, I, I didn't even realize Emily Blunt. Oh, it didn't even didn't? occur to me that Emily Blunt was playing, you know, uh, Kitty Oppenheimer. Yeah. It didn't even occur to me. She was so buried in that role, you know. Yeah, no Mary Poppins there. Yeah, no. <laughs> but um, which she was also great in. But yeah. Um, and I, and, and I should say no offense to Killian Murphy, who is, who's, I think if I, if I watch this film more times, which I think I'm going to do, I will become more and more enamored with his performance because he well, gives no, his such, per his performance was equally as good as Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. In a different way. In a different way. Yeah. He, it was, it was much more restrained. Yes. Much more restrained. He didn't have to speak to get an idea across. No, he was he could carry a lot of weight just sitting there in a chair listening to people talk. And you can just see all this stuff going on. You could in see his, his head. thoughts. Yeah, yeah. It's just he is insanely good, but he is very restrained. He could have carried on a conversation with the furniture and I would have watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Him just sitting in a room listening to other people talk and just watching the thoughts go through his head. Just, yeah, um, you know, just tremendous performance there. Uh, but Robert Downey Jr., every time he was on, he was basically stealing the show at that point um, with his performance. And he's not being over the top. He's not being flamboyant like, he's his, not Iron, even like being his Tony Stark funny. character. He's not being funny either. Yeah, he's really not even being funny. He didn't funny. really even get any laughs. No, no. There wasn't uh, a lot of laughs in this movie. Honestly. No, there wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of laughs. Uh, Matt Damon had a pretty good line with that. Had, got, had one of the few moments of humor when he when he said, "Try not to blow up the world." It was it was a thing that could happen. They didn't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 they didn't know. And his, I mean, but he was making a joke. His character was making a joke to uh, the up to to the character of Oppenheimer. He was making a joke, but he was also scared as he said it, and because uh, he understood the reality of what of what could possibly happen. Um, yeah. Okay. So now I've said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> Any other last words? Um, well, yes. that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of a, a, a Matt Damon moment you just had there, but no. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Anyways though. Um, yeah, good, good job. Uh, everybody on screen was great. Um, oh, and of course, uh, we forgot that Freddie Mercury is in this film too. Yeah. Rami Malek. Another very understated performance. You know, every, I think understated is what I would say for about a lot of the actors on this film. Doing great performances, but very understated performances. Nobody's trying to outdo each other. Everybody is just being this great ensemble and being respectful of the history that this is about. Uh, anyways, though. So, yeah. I guess that's it. Let us know if you've seen the film. Let us know your thoughts. And uh, if you like these videos, thank you very much for clicking like. Appreciate that. It really helps a lot. And thank you, patron supporters, for all that you do. You are fierce and mighty. Patron supporters get exclusive weekly videos not available on this channel. Everybody, thank you just so much for hanging out. We appreciate it. Take and Grogu care. says go see the movie. Yeah, Grogu says go see the movie. Next, we're going to go see Barbie. Bye, everybody. Bye.